our education and that matches the, the excellence of this physical structure. And, and some of what we talked about, you know, uh, my simple acronym for the parents that, that I talked about in my opening statement was, was Monomoy Voice, which is the vision of innovation, creativity, and excellence. Covers a lot. We can, we're drilling down into that now as we start the year. Um, and then the parents went off and into our classrooms, which was the feature, was to follow their students, schedule all eight courses, uh, and, and meet their great teachers and talk about expectations, talk about communications, talk about vision, and answer questions. And so the night was very uh, successful based on feedback from parents. And I just wanted to share one email that, was, that a parent sent. And this was a school choice parent um, that um, I worked with over the summer. It came in and gave, gave her a tour, a tour with her eighth grade daughter. Um, you know, to check the school out and made the decision to, to come here. So I got this email the following day after our curriculum night. Um, I wanted to share this. Uh, it's a reflection of our, our, what we're doing here at our school. Uh, Hi, Mr. Burkhead. I thought that it was important that I follow up with a thank you for the great open house last Wednesday night. My husband and I were very impressed with the new school as well with the teaching staff. Their qualifications are impressive and they are such a friendly and caring group of educators. We are so happy that our daughter was accepted into your school as a choice student. She is meeting a lot of nice kids, is being challenged, and is flourishing in the classroom. Thanks from a very happy parent. So I wanted to hear that. Um, I will assure you that the other 80% of my calls are not this pleasant from exciting and happy parents, but that'll do. And, and, and one more thing, and I'm not stalling, but I, I uh, want to share an opening day story with you guys. I, I, I like this, to, to share this typically with my staff, and if you heard it again, I apologize. Um, but a mother, mother goes into her son's room and, and, and tries to wake her son up. And if we have children, you've gone through this. I have two in high school now, so my, my son doesn't like getting up in the morning. But this particular mother went in, tried to wake her son up, and he refused to get up to school. And come on, son, you get to wake up. You get away. I'm gonna go get the water now. And, no, not the water, mom. Come on, I'll get up. I'll get up. You know, ten more minutes. No, you got to go to school. And um, you know, she's she's concerned. She says, you know, son, give me two reasons why you don't want to go to school. Well, I annoy the kids, and the teachers can't stand me. You know, she took her back a little bit, and, and then, um, so he comes right back and says, well, you, Mom, you give me two reasons why I should go to school. And she says, well, you're 45 years old, and you're the principal. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not a story about me, but it could be. All right, the, the numbers uh, for us, uh, these numbers on the cover sheet are, uh, you know, things are happening so fast, and I think we need to even update these as we speak. Um, the first month on the job, July through August, um, you know, we had over 51 new students choice into our school. I shared those numbers with you last uh, meeting. Uh, they're, they're impressive, but they also cause some uh, strain on our schedule in what we do and how we best assist those students in creating a terrific schedule. So we're up over 641 students with projections even next year without taking one more choice student closer to 700, already almost to capacity, uh, which is exciting, also challenging, and uh, we're meeting that challenge as we speak. But again, it puts a little stress on our schedule. The numbers, from a scheduling perspective, look nice. They're 18.3. A lot of our class sizes are in decent shape, but there are some, uh, and maybe more than I would like, that are not. Some uh, at 27, 28. Uh, anyone that's dealt with school schedules or any kind of schedule, it's a complex puzzle. And just taking the full-time teachers and dividing by the students and coming up with that number is certainly not uh, what you see in classrooms. Um, but we're not in terrible shape. I think this is a good starting point. Um, again, we do have some class sizes based on those 50 new students with no additional staffing. That's put a little stress if you typically do that. If you divide that up by 18, you get two, two point something new teachers. So um, that, that caused a little strain on our, on our, on our schedule. However, uh, we've done some creative things to address that. And I'm proud of our guidance staff and our teaching staff for, for handling that and adjusting that because the end game is that the kids have a schedule that is best for them. The schedules are based on students. Um, so what I'm also proud of that uh, is a little bit reflected here in these, in, not reflecting these numbers, but in my numbers, is uh, we offer independent studies to students. And right now, 23 of our students are taking those. Those are um, uh, challenging uh, independent courses that a teacher, most of the time volunteering their own time and additional time outside of their uh, contract of time, to work uh, directly with a student, one-to-one. -one. Um, they come up with a, uh, the student has to come up with a, uh, you know, essential question. Uh, research that they have to do, um, almost like an independent curriculum, it's something that they're passionate about, which is authentic learning is something that we strive for here. So if they want to go out and they want to 
build robots and be an engineer someday and they go do that, that teacher will spend time with them after school, during the prep period before school, work with that student, grade that student, and that student has some authentic ex learning experiences. So that number will continue to grow, we're proud of that, but that's 23 kids that are in other classes, putting stress on that. We also have 63 students that are in school service, something I think unique to our school, um, and it's a branches off of community service. And the vision here is to uh, give back to our own Students, students giving back to students and teachers. And I'll give you some examples of that. Uh, we, have a, we now have a student uh, help desk in the technology wing. So these are students that are very good at technology and passionate about it. And so their class is, is spent, uh, or that period of elective class is not spent uh, learning about that in books and, and online. They are actually troubleshooting teacher needs, other students' needs. We've got every student here has got a Chromebook now. There's going to be problems. We now have these students during those periods going out troubleshooting those issues that the students may have, because our, our staff couldn't handle that. Also, going into classrooms, helping teachers with needs, um, and the vision with that group is to expand it, uh, and eventually have them writing blog posts um, to get that piece, also producing um, some you know, products for the uh, younger kids in the middle school and the elementary school. So that's, that's flourishing, so that's one example. The other one is our tutoring program we're starting out. Um, you know, it was brought up tonight about our, our, our younger kids. Those eighth graders are now our ninth graders. We're very cognizant of that, and we will work relentlessly to make sure that all those kids pass in MCAS in 10th grade. And how do we do that? One example here is those uh, students that we have signed up for our tutoring program um, pick a topic that they're very strong in. They're usually juniors and seniors. And if science, let's say, for example, this, this student uh, second period is, uh, takes a class for uh, science tutoring, the schedule will go out to the teachers. The teachers will identify students in their ninth grade. We're, we're focusing on eighth and ninth graders now. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll identify certain kids that are struggling in science, and we'll get that child the tutoring during school time. Uh, a lot of programs that fail do a lot of stuff after school. And typically, the kids that fail don't stay after school, right? It's your AP students and all the other students. So we, we do it in school. And I think that's the key to some of the things that we're going to try to do. Uh, so that tutoring program is, again, this is all brand new. It's exciting. But this is a way for kids to help other kids and also get credit for it. So that's, that's an example of our school services. 63 students right now are doing things like that. We also have kid, uh, students working in here. So when we do presentations, they can help with the tech and audio uh, and that type of thing. They can uh, help students find books if they want to get into uh, being library media specialists. But also we have technology needs. This is not just the old school library. We're going to use a lot of technology in here. Uh, our Chromebook distribution to the students ha occurred in here. And those students that were in here for, for library media uh, specialists helped our educators uh, you know, with that production. So I, I think if you visit our school, you'll see it very alive, and you'll see students moving throughout classes uh, almost as educators, which they should be. And so there's a lot of authentic things that you won't typically see in a, in a typical school. We also have internships here. Uh, right now we have six students. We want to see that grow, uh, second semester. Uh, and the real cool thing is we're working closely uh, with uh, Mr. Hine in the elementary school where um, four of our students are going down to uh, the elementary school and want to uh, be future teachers. So they go down and it's almost like they're student teaching. They're going down to the classrooms, working with the younger students um, and, and getting that experience. You know, some real amazing things. So uh, we're proud of that as well. And then the other, the other two students right now will go out and do some type of community internship. If they're interested in nursing, they may go to the hospital and that type of thing. And again, these are baseline numbers. I hope to come back second semester and see these uh, expanded on because uh, you know, that's what we're about. So that's the academic piece. Those are, those are some of the numbers. Uh, Sam brought up the clubs and activities fair we have because you know, part of being in high school is also very social. It needs to be a positive experience. Uh, so, you know, and this is uh, the vision that I was attracted to here is we have in our schedule an enrichment block every other week. 40 minute period, small class size, 10, everybody, every teacher has approximately 10 students that period because we're all hands on deck, no prep periods. I teach my own class, uh, which is, you know, I've mentioned this before, I've got 10 of my own students. It's been really cool for me. I think I believe in modeling that. Um, so they all happen to be seniors. We, we talked today. And the idea came up, you know, from the students and teachers that um, seeing a club and an activity on a piece of paper might be one thing, and Sam mentioned this very well, but when you go to a table and there's kids there that actually are part of that club and can answer your questions and you see the, the signage and the video and, the, and, the, and what they actually do, that's attractive. So that was an idea that you, you will see, typically see after school, uh, which a lot of kids don't go to. We did it during school time because it's that important to us and it's that important to our value structure. Um, and the sign-ups for after-school clubs and activities exploded. Every club filled at least one sheet. I mean, they were, it was really, really positive. So 
that's an important piece to me. I know it's important to our teachers that we want our students uh, involved in a daily curriculum, but also the after school curriculum, which is our clubs and activities, socializing with each other. So um, I'll take any questions now. Yes, yes sir. So the, uh, uh, you have 640 students in the high school. Uh, the out of district, that nine, does that, that get included somewhere, or do you have 649 or six? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, the first page. No, yeah. the, the, the out of district uh, students aren't in the high school, so they're, they're in placements. They're, they're in our numbers, but are in placements outside of, outside of Monoboy. I don't understand. They're gone. No, they're, they're, they're right. enrolled students, but they're special education students. Right. And then they're at the high school level, level, but they're part of our enrollment and part of our county. Okay. So that's why I was trying to get to the number. Is it 640 or 649 in the high school? 641. 640. That's that are in this building. That's right. Okay. Thank you. So I have um, one question, and I don't know if it's available. One of the most interesting things to me is how many students that it and I'm going to use perhaps the wrong word, so forgive me, have choiced out in the past, have come back to the high school and the grade schools that were Harwich and Chatham residents that were going to other schools that have come back. Because that to me is a, a prime indicator of something. <laughs> yeah, we, we reported that last night. Out of that 50 something, at, at least half, 25, 28 in the high school. Yeah. It was 31. 31, thank you. Yeah. At, the last, at, at the last school committee meeting, that, uh, oh, wait. Now I'm confused. Forgive me. If they were Harwich or Chatham students that had choice out, when they came back, they were Harwich students that came back. So why would they be considered choice in as part of that 50 number? Okay. All right. I thought so. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, one of the ways also to look They're at coming it, and going. when we when we were uh, uh, brainstorming and designing this model school, and then looking at enrollment figures, many of us said that the youngsters who happen to be at uh, NASA, for example, right. and if they are uh, ninth graders and tenth graders, <laughs> we did not uh, count on them as returning home. So these numbers, to me, initially, that's good news. Thirty students who who said we're going to come home. Mom and dads must have said, I, I think we want to give this program a shot. So that's the beginning. So, Terry, it's excellent. That's so, a great number. So, so the, the number, just to, just to uh, be clear, is there were, 50, there were 51 students as of last school committee meeting that, that were new enrollments here at Monomoy. Uh, of those, 16 uh, said when they were enrolling that that they have, they have Harwich and Chatham zip codes, but their families moved here because of the schools. And so they, you know, so they're, they're new move-ins because of, of the, you know, the new high school building. There were 15 other students that were choiced out either to private, I mean, either to uh, like Sturgis or to uh, Nauset or DY that came home. So 15 came back that were upperclassmen um, and uh, and then there were the other twenty were students who were you know coming here by you know by choice uh, that ha didn't have Harvard or Chatham zip codes. That's excellent. The other question I would have, if there's an answer for it, is out of the choice in students, is there an average grade level? No. Uh, is a qualification for them coming into the school uh, anyway academic? It, it, it can't, can't be. Can't be. No. That would be Sorry, discriminatory. <laughs> We'd be concerned about discrimination. Understand. Understand. Those that moved in, they moved into Chatham and Howard. <laughs> yeah, those guys are, you know, Dennis. <laughs> Bill, thank you. Uh, thank great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Just in, in terms of uh, enrollment on the front page of the, the packet that you have, uh, was me just trying to mentally. Uh, look at you know look at uh, enrollment uh, and try to project out try to project out some trends as we go into developing budgets. As, you know, uh, again, uh, enrollment in Massachusetts is all based on the you know the October one numbers. This is us trying to get a head start on this. So next week 
the, are the numbers that we have to report to the state that, you know, that get published. Um, <coughs> but if you, uh, if you look at the bottom of the, uh, of the page, there's a little grid, and I look at the uh, middle school enrollment, which is the second to last line going across, and the, uh, uh, the high school enrollment. So, uh, so last year, our middle school enrollments in our, uh, uh, our, our excuse me, um, last year uh, we had, I'd have to go back up and tally you know, how, much, how many kids were in the middle school, but we uh, were at uh, 434 for our middle school this year and 641 for our high school. Um, we have historically hemorrhaged students in sixth grade when they have an option of a charter school within you know, Harwich. And you know, so we see uh, a net movement of kids going out. And then we lose kids again to choice uh, when uh, you know, a small amount will, you know, will look at Sturgis, you know, some will look at Nauset, some will look at DY, and, uh, and some of our students will look at Cape Tech. So we, we see a net loss of students uh, at, at ninth grade. So, so I was just trying to project out the next three years, and if we continue those losses, I, I'm actually quite optimistic that, you know, that uh, uh, when it comes time for families to make decisions about schools, you know, to have Brian and Bill in place, to have a curriculum in place, to have buildings that families can see, I actually think that we'll hemorrhage less uh, in, in those two areas. But if we would continue to hemorrhage at uh, at sixth and ninth grade as we had um, and and just have the students that are in the system roll up over the next uh, over the next three years we would see the middle school enrollment going up from 434 to 446 then to 448 and then the 471 just by the students that are here and and then taking into account uh, historical patterns of loss that I you know so I, I think those numbers will actually be better for us are, are higher uh, at the high school level. Uh, we'd see uh, the 641 going to 675 next year, 684, and then 688. Uh, and, and again, you know, if we don't have the historical losses, you know, if this building's at capacity, um, you know, more than likely in, in 2017. Um, it, this, you know, it, this begs the question, and this is you know, one that uh, we, we have to be very strategic about, you know, how much choice do we let in? Uh, you know, we don't want to you know, find ourselves in, you know, in this bind of being, uh, you, know, you know, where the, uh, you know, the enrollment is now too high, you know, too high for the high school. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's a conversation that I've had with Bill that, you know, that we need to now say, okay, uh, you know, eighth and ninth grade are filled. Uh, you know, if, you know, if there's you know, if there's students that are 11, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, we can probably fit them in and schedule them. But uh, but we have to just kind of be cognizant of what the what the enrollment is going to look like uh, over over the long haul. Um, I was also playing around with doing some projecting on the uh, on the next sheet as we need to start launching into budgets and. Uh, uh, this this one kind of takes those enrollment numbers, and, and again this is this just becomes sort of a it, it's it, it, it the, the further out that, you know, in terms of years that you go, uh, the more you know, you know, the more vague it is. You know, so when we're trying to project enrollment numbers out to 2020, keep in mind the kindergartners haven't been conceived yet. Um, so, <laughs> So, you know, so all, all, all we need is a blackout. You know, I could you know, change things. <laughs> um, so, I think um, your high school teacher might help that. So, um, so one of one of the concerns that I've heard raised uh, at, at 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 certain meetings, uh, you know, particularly in Harwich, is that you know that the that the three year rolling average is going to go up into the 80s in Harwich. Um, it, it's it, it increases and it has been increasing. So if you look at the the actual split uh, was a you know, 27 uh, uh, 27 73 <coughs> back in FY14. Uh, it's it's at 27 73 now. It's going to slowly shift up, but uh, but what we're at least seeing out there is uh, uh, potentially only a you know. 
a, a one or two percent shift. It's it's not. Um, I, we don't see it, or I would I would be highly surprised that it shifts, you know, up into the uh, you know to the upper 70s. So uh, I think that's you know that's a piece as we uh, start uh, developing the uh, five-year plans and the, the you know the financial picture for the high school. It's just what that what that split is for our communities because it, it impacts and you know, we use these numbers and that the percentages when it comes to the operating budget when it comes to transportation and also when it comes to uh, assessing the debt it's time for uh, it's time for the Irish Taxpayers Association to start running ads about how wonderful Chatham is as a, <laughs> as a place to live you know that was my question before we moved to Chatham if this cohort survival continues which I think it does it's, it's very conservative uh, we're faced with a pleasurable dilemma as opposed to three years ago hearing throughout the communities that we're going to be building or uh, having a Monomoy Middle School too large for the number of kids, a school here at the high school level too large. Uh, so that, that, that's going to be a uh, challenge, but one that uh, I think we would all look forward to solving. Uh, thanks, Scott. Uh, subcommittee reports. Okay. Uh, Lou. Just a quick question. If possible, and this is a difficult task, one that you do, but I know to give out is difficult. But it would really help if we could see the cost per student to educate a student and the cost to educate a chartered, or a not chartered, but a choice in student. That would help to balance that equation because we're really talking about cost when it comes to that. And how, at which point <coughs> is that line drawn that says it's too expensive, we need to stop. That would be an interesting if you could provide that, coffee, Starbucks, whatever. I, I couldn't get his jacket and he didn't wear it. He left. <laughs> would that be possible or is there, am I asking? I, I, I would say when it comes, uh, maybe I'm looking at this too simplistically. The, the cost is the same for both. 